I'm a seismologist and seismologists use seismic waves to study the structure of the earth. They also study earthquakes and earthquake rupture processes. <laughs> Most of the earth is actually beneath our feet, not on the surface. And so for me, um, it was a really uh, intriguing way to like um, solve puzzles. In 2016, there was a, a large magnitude earthquake in the subduction zone offshore of Ecuador. It was a, a magnitude 7.8 earthquake. And I had actually been scheduled to travel to Ecuador to work with some of my colleagues there. And the day before I was set to fly to Ecuador to work with them, the earthquake happened. So. Um, immediately I e emailed them and said, should I defer my travel or, or should I come? Not, not to work on this other project, but to help them um, in terms of their response. So they said, come on down. So, so I did. And I spent a week down there with them and with other colleagues, international colleagues who were already in country. And one outcome of that trip down there, in addition to being a resource for them to draw on as they were um, providing information in the wake of this large earthquake, was that we organized what we call a rapid response um, to the earthquake, where we mobilize um, as quickly as possible, um, as many seismometers as we can, get them into the country, put them into the ground, and start recording aftershocks from the earthquake. So we collected data for a year. And one of the things that we were particularly interested in studying is, is what are the control on the rupture processes and in the event of an earthquake, how much of that plate interface is actually gonna rupture? How large is that rupture gonna be? And we saw very distinctive patterns in the aftershocks. And to some extent, these patterns mapped what we call background seismicity that happens in that part of the margin. So smaller magnitude earthquakes that are happening, you know, sort of all the time in the background. And what we were able to determine, the number of instruments we had provided us a lot more information and a lot higher resolution image or picture of what's happening along that part of the margin than was possible before. And one of the things that we've learned is that the, the ruptures along that part of the margin, the size of them, the extent of them, so the width and the length of them, seem to be controlled primarily by topography or structure on the subducting plate. You know, all the work I do is collaborative with colleagues at Lehigh, colleagues at other institutions, involves students, graduate students and undergraduates at, Le at Lehigh. So, you know, introducing them to the world and to um, new ways of working and seeing and new cultures has been a really rewar rewarding part of the work I do.